kindly sit down. No need to stand up, you are familiar with me. You know, uh, what is really wrong with an American character <laughs> and an Oriental gentleman? Many crowds would say, Mahiyain, that the Filipinos and the Orientals are fundamentally shy. They bow at the slightest uh, a good statement, even if already introduced, the whisper, they do not shout. And they say that we are a shy Mahia in tribe. Most of the Asians are characterized by that kind, that kind. Well, the Americans are a little bit loud, sometimes rowdy, and they have this uh, volume of their voice and their lary larynx uh, not well adjusted to civility. <laughs> yeah, I'm suppressing a mayor. What's wrong here? Everything all right? We do not do that. We say, Mr. Vice, Premier, how are you? And uh, everything good here? So the one thing that really matters is to say, we are a shy race, tribe. And they are the more forward commanding uh, voice befitting obedience. You know, I have the Chinese blood, I have the Moro blood, I have the Visayan blood, I have studied the nuances of our characters. I have come to the conclusion that we are Orientals, a very courteous race. <laughs> the problem is when you talk to the Westerners, Americans and all, they are a very discourteous people. <laughs> and Talking of business, uh, I would rather that we keep this meeting with ourselves. And if you have the capital, and there's a Filipino Chinese guy who is also rich, and if you see an American approaching you, please shut up. <laughs> Do not include him in the talk because you will just spoil everything. <laughs> I have yet to hear <laughs> at least in our experience Filipino Chinese partnering with American businessmen. And if you do that, that is the shortest way of losing your money. But, you know, I have yet to hear Americans going to my office for the 23 years that I've been mayor, expressing good intentions and about going to business that would help the food and everything. They go there naturally for the basics, importation of fruits and everything, just what China is doing. But they go for the mining and all of these things that are really very detrimental to your country. And that is why I am leaving Gina Lopez on her own. 
because they are really mining owned by the Americans or in consortium with the Americans and Filipinos who are wrecking havoc on our planet Earth. And so that is what I mean. When this Chinese guy goes for the small things, the Americans would come in very strong and discourteous. And I have seen that. I've never really liked them, not because they are not doing it well in my country, but long, long before, I already had that experience of an American idiotic arrogance. You know, I was going to Brazil with some of the congressmen. And when we came back, because our entry, port of entry was uh, LA, going there was Miami. Uh, you know, when I was cleared by customs, I was going out at the LA Lux uh, airport. Here comes this black guy in uniform, also black, uh, with the pistol, also black, and his shoes was black. And I thought that he was somebody, no, no, no slur intended, that is his original color. And uh, he accosted me and said, may, 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 may I see your passport? So it was a diplomatic passport because we were traveling most of the congressmen in my entourage were traveling with passports, diplomatic. And he said, where is your letter of authority to travel? And so that was the first time that I said it was missing. And I said, well, probably because that letter was uh, addressed to the port of entry in South America, which is Brazil. And it was not clear. And so probably it was not reinserted in the passport. And then it did not this way. You know, this guy brought me to a room to interrogate me. I said, I, I'm a congressman of my place, so uh, what do you want to know? And what well, sorts of things? And so I said, uh, if you detain me any further, and if there's a plane available going back to the Philippines now, I'd be happy to ride and go home. That was the last time I went to America. Maybe sometime soon, the Americans come to my country for business and all, including pedophilia. And uh, they come to my country, sans a visa, they do not need it, they go there as if they own the place. Maybe thinking that it was their colony until now. And Filipinos who go to America and who have the money, they are not just only berated in the visa control, the consular office of the Dewey, they are humiliated. And so maybe it's an American here. If you're planning to go to my country, you get a visa from where you come from. Maybe. It's about time. If you think they're liberal with the Filipinos, it's because they have the brains. And you get most of the best and the brightest of the Filipinos for your country. Go that in the movies and all, so they're all Indians and they're all Pakistan. They're all Asians. But you could hardly see an American that is really bright enough to cure even himself. 
ललित कोई आया अमेरिका दस जज कंट्रोल द इकोनॉमी ना हिस प्लेस दैट ही इज द मोस्ट पावरफुल इंडस्ट्रियल नेशन इन द वर्ल्ड लेट्स लेट द बुलशिट Why? If he is really the most powerful industrial power in the entire world, this should be paying taxes or the money, the foreign exchange, the trade imbalance between America and China. How can you be the most powerful industrial country when you owe China? And you are not paying it for almost three trillion dollar. Kalak 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 utang mu, utang kau. So, and maybe because they they. China cannot collect. It might just assign the credit to each and every one who was here, and the poorer countries. I'd be happy if you assign five billion of your credit to me. Let me let me collect it for you. But allow me to use it for some time before returning the capital to you, because we Filipinos we pay our obligations. We are men of honor. Ola ng per China has no money. It is. A country which is afflicted by paranoia. The United States of America is afflicted by paranoia. The deathly afraid of Putin because Putin is even afraid of himself. He might he might not restrain himself and you go to war and and then they have this. EU in shambles, and they could not even help Greece and the other uh, countries to the extent that uh, the Brexit uh, and maybe more will go out of that uh, stupid uh, and the first place they should not have done it. Uh, it has no money. It cannot guarantee help. It will not go to war. I am sure of that. And they are afraid of Putin, who is ready to go to war any time. And in China, here they can never hope, really, because in the East Asian affair, Cambodia could not be theirs, 100%. It is an ally. Of China, Laos. It is always an ally of China. Vietnam, same thing. We do know of Indonesia is neutral. The thirty of the Philippines is veering towards China. Because China has the character of an Oriental, it does not go around insulting people, insisting on policies to follow them, and trying to control the money of the world through the IMF and the World Bank. Dito Asian Development Bank. 
Now go that of late, uh, China decided to make a counter banner here. And that is the EIIB. And so, America is really uh, checkmate here. It is not ready for war because they are not ready to die anymore. And you can see it when in the special forces, when they go home, there's a lot of crying and criticism and a congressman talking there, filibustering about the loss of an American life. Filipinos, if you want to go to war, go. As long as it is uh, really the desire of the nation to protect each other. The 44 Mama Sapano soldiers, they went inside, they died. No dramatics, no nothing. No, except that uh, we grieve for our soldiers, uh, uh, maybe in, this, in, in the days ahead, I will order the opening of the PC again. Not really to prosecute people, but just to know what happened. Who got the five million? Whether the tip of the finger of Marwan was gotten by the special forces of the United States, or was it really brought to the forensic division, John Sapran? These are the lies that are imposed upon the people, which is not true. Let us go for the truth. Let it out, never mind about corruption. Too late in the day. But if there's any been interested, fine. So even in business now, America cannot help us. All the time I said, you have 33 million dollars Oh, we have 33 million dollars, sir, and uh, you can do what you want with that. It, it's not the kind of thing that, uh, just like an uncle leaving the house after eating and say, Hey, nephew, I have some money for you for your college expenses. That's the way. We do it the formal way. But Japan, Korea, and the rest, are the benefactors, but most the biggest in China. And when they lend you, they lend you money. They do not lend you promises and installments. And that's the big difference between the tranche per tranche of the Americas and the way we handle our goodwill here. When it is money intended for you, to make sure that you have this project for your upliftment, it is there. And I do not see America has that. Now, the reason why I decided to ship here is because I do not see any reason why I should stick with America who invaded us after the Spaniards for 400 years, stayed there for 50 years, and since then nothing has happened. It's all election corruption, election corruption, election, all the way. And despite they say that they have poured millions on us, on our economy, nothing has happened. But you know, I really cannot just conceive of an idea that despite corruption after corruption, they still give the money to the same person who take advantage of it. To the same oligarchs, to the same rich people. But when the money is in the bank, they're given the priority to borrow it. It's like the, 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 the fat of the land. They scramble for it. They spend the money. 
Sometimes it is lost and everything is forgiven. Nothing of those big money that the Americans gave ever was used for the loans to be given to the downtrodden. And I said to my advisors, who are these persons who should be here? But in Davao City, there's a market. There's a road in front of the market. At about four o'clock, the Moro people, most of them, Maranao, Maguindano, and it's where the highest incidence of hunger, and of course, for rupture also, by the officials. They are there, they spread the cloth, piles of banana, tomato, and onions, and they sell it. And at seven o'clock, they fold up because traffic is already very busy. These are the guys who haven't really tasted what government feels or how it operates. And yet for the so many generations of American aid, it does not really change the lives of the Philippines. And that's why you said uh, to our Japanese hosts, uh, I need money to help the poor. And if there is really money with no conditions attached as to where it could be spent, it should be spent on the ground level first. I will take care first of those who never had or never tasted even a luxury in their lifetime. Second one is I need money because I have to stop the five six. <laughs> we do not have we do not have the ambassador of India. Their style, no, no offended to the great country of India. But there are citizens of India going about everywhere into the five six. There was a usurious interest that would really kill even the enterprising spirit of the Filipinos. They lend you, they lend you the money, and you would have to buy from them other articles of the household. It's a there is salad set, a refrigerator. If you don't do that, if you are not willing to buy, no, no. So you are paying the you are paying the loan at five six. And at the same time, you're paying for the appliances that are put in your house. And you have to pay double plus interest also. There are things in the Filipino life which has been there for a long time. And yet nobody has really... Eh, ako na kumakain ako sa ha, madaling araw. Because I have two houses. After the first house, I ask my girlfriend, let's eat. <laughs> and I enjoy, enjoy native food. So after eating food, balot and everything, I deliver her to the first house. Then I go back to the second house to rest. So nakikita ko yung nightlife. And I see how really life has been miserable to me. Kaya kung tulungan ako na, if Japan would help me, <laughs> eh, eh, China would help me. And Japan also has promised something like uh, the railway, everything. And they, have, they gave me a, a, a letter about that. 
No, I, I, I will just, uh, I know, of course, Korea. But then I am more inclined to get, uh, to borrow from China. <laughs> Why? Because they are not more, if it's really for a loan, they are not really eager to collect. <laughs> and sometimes we will forget <laughs> because of our friendship. Japan and Korea, no. Uh, Koreans, uh, uh, maybe uh, Japan, oh, may, yeah, but better, better, better practice is just stick with China. <laughs> just, 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 just more money. And the only thing that I really like about China, sir, is your sincerity. Alam mo, pag in check, do not be insulted, do not be offended about going in check. Because my lolo, my grandfather, on the mother side, was a child. Pero itong mga in check, pag nagsabi yan, talagang ibibigay. At mawa maawain. Mandito yan sila lahat. I do not kind of uh, see, but is uh, Sami O here? <laughs> Alam mo ng tao na yan, nanalo yan sa lending. Lending legit, not lending serious. One thing, even the others, my friends, Yung bang human rights, sabi ko, you, you, we are all be brain. You know, when I said, I will kill you if you destroy my country. I will kill you if you destroy the youth of the land. By any stretch of imagination, that cannot be an actionable wrong. It is an expression of self-preservation. I have every right to protect the Filipino as I am their president. Now, if you start to say, ipapakulong ako ninyo, and they do it over and over again, they really ask for it. And when I went to Laos, I never, marami ko ba di members of that, I never mentioned his name. Ano ko ilabas nilang isyo na extrajudicial kill? Nandiyan niya ang natin. Putang ina, huwag nilang gawin niyan kung bastusin ako nila. Talagang... And itong nag-report, sa GMA, nag-report kay Lingao, kay Edson Lingao, took it to be the ex-cathedral truth of what he said and repeated what I supposedly But when he reviewed the tapes, there was none. So they had to apologize. I need to see Jews in the State Department and Obama never apologized. Just the feed that you were uh, insulted by Duterte, so these are the things, these are the mindsets that uh, the Chinese and uh, the Americans can never really have. And Thai, because they have this brogadashu, that's the word. If there is such a word, brogadashu. Well, See, I could not even pronounce the word. Hambugiro na lang. So with that, I, in this venue, Your Honor, in this venue, I announce my separation from
the United States. <laughs> Both in military not maybe social because the Philippines, both the military but economics also. So please, uh, you have another problem of economics in my country. <laughs> I have separated from them. So I will be dependent on you for all time. But do not worry, we will also help as you help us. Thank you. Opo ho kayo. Kasi ito, from Terian, kung, kung wala kang utak, gaya ng mga iyo, mga human rights, eh, magbasa ka dyan. Sino? Ayaw ko yan. Kasi kapiing yan. Sa, sa klase ito yan, kapiing. So, dito tayo sa, just like to greet uh, some members of my entourage, not really because uh, uh, mas importante sila kaysa inyo, but to introduce to you the officers who helped me run the country. We have before us uh, Pantaleon Alvarez, uh, the Speaker of the House. Uh, pagpasensyahan ninyo, uh, balita ko, kabi hinahapol nyo ng oh, asawa niya, o. Oh. <laughs> Di Secretary Perfecto Yasai Jr. sa ating Foreign Secretary. Uh, graduate yan, uh, cum laude, UP yan. Siya yung Press Secretary. Senator Alan Peter Cayetano. Bright Jan, kita naman niyo sa TV. Senator Sherwin Gachalian. Where are you? Basta ang negosyo mo, pariho kay speaker rin ha. Then you have... Uh, uh, itong si Governor Hermilando Mandanas of Batangas. Ay, sir, tama na. Si Amy Marcos. Then si Elizabeth T. of the Philippine Embassy. Marami pa po sila. Uh, actually, may... Sabihin lang ako sa inyo, pero... Dapat ko kumplito yan eh. Secretary Duresa, the peace process. Valedictoria namin to sa high school, sa Digos. Kasi nalipat ako noong Davao City, tapos hindi man ako, ayaw man ang Ateneo sa akin. So, ayaw, kayo lang dyan. So, ang, ang sunod po si Secretary Pernia sa Economics. Uh, UP to mabigat. Ano ito? Professor Emeritus ng Economics. Then we have Wanda Teo sa Tourism. Then we have Ramon Lopez sa DTI. Trade and Industry. We have Mark Villar sa DPWA. Uh, Puro Tigasto. Sunny Dominguez yung... Kababata ko to, valedictorian. Lahat ng ano ko dito sa ano pinakiyako sa inyo puro ano yan. Then uh, we have uh, Manny Pinyol. Ito wag ninyo itong ano kala nila taga Kidapawan to. This guy graduated summa cum laude. Ha. Huh? 
uh, Art Tugadi, kasama ko sa Law School, sa San Beda, Valedictorian. Uh, si June Ivasco, bright na pare. Uh, used to be a priest. Mm. Used to be an NPA. Sa panahon ko, mayor ako sa Dabao, nahuli yan siya. Tapos, patay na sana ng mga sundalo nung nalaman ko, pare, silang dalawa ni Father Tison, isang waray rin. Dalawa yan lang silang pare, pumunta ng Mindanao, makipaglaban doon. But when they were arrested, I intervened kasi pare, Fiscal ako noon. Ako yung nag-imbestiga sa kasi nila. And after he was released, nagtrabaho sa akin, eventually naging mayor ako, chief of staff siya. Tapos tumakbo pagka mayor ng Maribuhok sa Cebu, nanalo. Abol, Bol, Cebu. Doon siya na stayed there for quite a time until naging cabinet member siya. Uh, uh, ang sunod sa kanya, kalaban niya noon, si General Esperon. General Esperon is my national security advisor. Uh, tapos we have si Martin Andanar. Uh, we have... Uh, Manny Villar, ang uh, um, aking, uh, well, uh, I hope he will consider it, but uh, sayang. Uh, uh, maybe next time I'd, uh, pero ako, ako ngayon, Villar na ako, sa totoo lang. So magdating ng panahon, huwag na kayo magtanong. Uh, ang sumunod sa kanya, si Bingbong. Bongbongbong. Uh, uh, kung manalo siya sa protest niya, baka bago ang ating vice presidente. Then you have the presidential spokesman. Actually, pastor ito siya. That's why he's very soft-spoken. <laughs> Pastor Ernie Abelia. <laughs> Sino po bang? I see Harry Rocky. <laughs> oh. Ito, mano to ha? He's a very critical guy. He does not really care if you are a friend or not. And I, I like him to be that way. Total, ako naman, there will never be time that I'll be talking about uh, a bad arrangement. Or, kung kaharap tayo, ang pag-usapan natin kung ano lang tama at nasa batas. So, Harry Rogge is a, a welcome guest sa aking entourage uh, because I like people who speak up their mind. Tapos, yung honest. Ayan nga, nagkalitsi-litsi ang Pilipinas dyan sa maraming kalukuhan. Then you have itong ito, sikat ito na abogado. Ang kanyang mga kliyente, karamihan mga artista. Yung naghiwalayan, tapos na, 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 yung iba yung pinagpatay yung mga lover. Uh, ano ito siya, yung pati he is the sartorial elegance kasi kung magdamit ito, totoo lang, hindi ko maintindihan rin. <laughs> Sal Panelo. <laughs> Kabarong. Hindi masyado makatagal kasi alam ko ipitin kayo sa panahon. Simplein ko na lang. Itong Pilipinas, para itong pal, na 
bumubilo na anda na. Sige lang. Nasa runway lang. For almost so many days. Hindi talaga tayo nag... Hanggang dyan lang. So ano, ano ang nangyari sa bayan natin? Bakit ganun? Bakit karamihan? Hindi ko na sabihin na, 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 na ano ako eh. Sa labas na lang, nagkalat tayo sa buong mundo. Bakit hindi tayo makapagawa ng bayan na atin, na dyan tayo magtrabaho at walang delikado ang mga anak natin, may pagkain, and all of the things that a country needs to survive. Maybe education, but it is not really affordable to all. And uh, this is not really to offend anybody. But yung mga graduate rin sa of lesser uh, standard na, na, hindi rin pwede. Kaya hindi nakakalabas yung, for example, yung sa Delpan Bridge sa Tondo. Hindi mo nila sila bigyan ng panahon, edukasyon na maganda. If they could not even really talk in, in straight English or um, grammar, no? that is acceptable. Hindi makakalabas yan sila dyan. Hindi talaga, masaya yan sa tundo. Kasi hanggang dyan lang ang kaya nila ng high school, they do not get the proper education. At sa Mindanao naman, ganun. It's rock with troubles. Tapos hardly there is equality of education somewhere na makuha. Kaya ako, I've been mayor for 23 years. Ako po'y ordinaryong tao lang pariyo sa inyo. Unlike ito, I have assembled sa kabinete ko, hindi ito mga pitsugin. Akala lang ninyo kasi hindi nyo narinig eh. Hindi naman ito mga politiko. But they are really, kagaya ni Jess. Ako, napaalis sa Ateneo second year. But ang sa klase namin noon, Sunny Dominguez was the valedictorian. Paglipad ko doon sa Digos, Dabao del Sur, wala pang Dabao del Sur, isang Dabao pa, Municipality of Digos. Nandoon rin ako, si, ang valedictorian namin, si Jess Doresa, number 10 sa bar. Baski ako saan ako magpunta, last nagla ako. Kasi maraming bright sa Pilipinas eh. Kasi sa kabukiran. So ganito ngayon, why are we suffering and in shambles? Alam mo kung ano, ang simple lang pakasalita. Because there is so much corruption in government. At saka nakawan. Pati drugs at criminality. Yang tatlo na yan ang nukumihila sa atin pababa. Walang magpunta doon, magtayo ka ng canning factory somewhere there under Mindanao. Pag hindi pumunta yung NPA, hingi. Tapos mayroong MI, of course it's revolutionary tax because it's a revolution. Nandyan yung MN. And even without the money element, talagang magulo ang ating bayan. Eh ako ho naman, I was pondering, I was already 71 years old. Itong year na ito. Gusto ko nang mag-retire. Tama na. 23 years as mayor, one time uh, congressman, then one time mayor, vice mayor ako ng anak ko si Inday, yung nanuntok ng... So... so Almost 40 years ago, and I was a prosecutor. Piskal po ako, I was just doing trial work every day. But this year, sabi ko kang Inday, na ikaw na, ayaw ni Inday. Kaya nagpapaganon-ganon ako. But for the many issues also. Kasi wala akong nakitang neither Grace, Rojas, or Binay talking about 
the major problems of our country. Wala akong narinig sa kanila about Mindanao. Alam mo, ayusin ating Mindanao pagka sumabog yan. The, the Philippines will be dismembered. Maniwala kayo, tagaroon ako. At ang lula ko, Maranao. Ang nanay ko, mistisa Maranao. Ang lolo ko, Chinese. Macau, lame. Maniwala kayo doon. Patak kami ang lahat. Halos Mindanao ang line up dito. Pagka hindi na ayos, I was not listening to anybody. Just talking about. Ang ano yung, kung nanood kayo sa debate, yung mga specific, ah, bla bla bla. Kaya sabi ko, kay Rojas, itang ina, itape mo na lang yung speech mo dyan, pabalik-balik ka man. Yun lang, wala akong nakita ng talk. And of course, corruption and drugs. Nasisira talaga ang bayan natin. Kaya ako, I had to run with nobody supporting me. Maniwala kayo na wala akong governor sa Luzon except two. Aimee, Marcos, and Representative Abet Garcia ng Bataan. And of course, sa Marindoke, si Velasquez. Sibu, wala ako na. And to think that my father comes from Sibu. Sibuano yun. Wala talaga. Niwala ako isang barangay captain sa Visayas o sa Luzon. Pero tumakbo ako dahil ako baka sakali. But I never expected na talagang manalo ako. I was just hopeful. Hope. Full lang. Full of hopes. <laughs> But you know, pagdating ng eleksyon, despite wala akong pera, despite na wala akong makinarya, I said, PDP, or really not, but it was almost a moribund party. I could hardly, wala na kami pera. But when the votes came in, mag-umpisa tayo sa labas, kay Mahong Kong, kay Brunei, nag-landslide ako halos. On the average, 75 ako sa lahat. Labas, Saudi Arabia. Nagmalop talaga ako. Then okay lang yun. Dito sa loob, ganun rin. So ang majority ko, from the next, I got 15. Out of that 15 million, six of that was my margin from my next neighbor. So nandito na ako, isip-isip ko, why? Bakit ako nanalo? Because tama ang messaging ko. Yung sinasabi ko sa kampanya, I said, corrupt and corruption, drugs, pati criminality. So ngayon, nandito na ako, hindi ko nakabaan. Noon sa NEDA, meron kaming application sa railroad. I filed it when I was still a mayor, about two years ago. Presidente na lang ako. Na-withdraw na rin kaya hindi daw bagay sa amin. But it, it takes years and years and years. Basta anong departamento, isang taon yan. Ang pot, alam mo itong mga gagong to, hindi nagtatrabaho eh. Kasi kung tatrabaho, yun lang nila, gaya ng permit. Hindi ba makukuha ka ng permit, business permit? Three days. Electrical clearance, clear three, police clearance, one day, hintayin mo dyan. Madali lang man kung trabaho. Ang problema nitong Pilipinas, naging kultura na ng korupsyon na kung gumalaw 
sila magbayad ka pa anywhere. Ngayon, mag-uwi kayo sa inyo, magdala kayo ng mga perfume dyan, pagbukas ng ano, may lima ka, kunin ang dalawa. Di ba? Ano. Tapos, pahirapan ang sa immigration. Because, ganito yan eh, you are not asserting your rights. From now on, kung may maghingi sa inyo, kasi hoda presidente, vice president, para sa papel mo, putang ina, sampalin mo. Iyan lang ang paraan eh. Ang mga Amerikano, they are assertive. Kasi hindi kayo mag-assert ng right ninyo, hindi talaga mamamatay itong korupsyon na to. Kaya kayo magsabi, sabi mo sa customs, kaya kukuna yan. Pag kinuha sabi mo, putang ina, bakit? Hindi mo propiedad dyan. Huwag mong kuna yan because I will raise hell. Magsisigaw ka. Makukuha ng mga media yan doon o makukuha ng TV. Aabot talaga sa akin yan. Kapag umabot sa akin, ah. <laughs> Ngayon, ang RPN ni Andanar, uh, nagdidebate kami, baka raw kami malibel. Ah, sige na, wala ko niya. Uh, 8888. I know, but if you have to call the Philippines, you have to enter the highway 802 at ayan. No, 06. 068. Then 888. Meron dyan. Lagay mo ang pangalan. Huwag ka lang magmundagdagan. Nakaroon ako ni problema nitong si Consul ganon. Kasi inhiaan ako. Ang ganon. Period. Lalabas yan sa after, uh, uh, sa may umaga, may news eh. Lahat naman ng TV station may news. For one hour yan, lalabas yung mga complaints ninyo. I- I- titignan ko yan. Una-una, ilagay mo po you put on notice the entire Republic of the Philippines that there is an employee na nireklamo. Whether true or not, well, that's part of the hazards of... Uh, kaya kami mga politiko, mga bilyon-bilyon ang tinago ko namin. Yan mga ganun. But the next day, he will be given a chance to answer. Pero alam ko, alam na ng buong Pilipinas na ito siya, may atraso ito. Ano, so, I will remember him. Now, si Sal, sabi niya na ang kanyang ano, medyo mahirap kasi malaybel. I, I take the opposite stand na hindi. Because uh, pariho lang rin yan sa reporting sa newspaper. You are apprising the community of the shenanigans of itong taga-guberno. Hindi ninyo eh, sumunod sa akin. Wala talaga mangyari. So, kima polis, ma military, you just be assertive. Huwag kayong matakot, mapriso o dalin. Because I will be there. Kung magsumbong yung inyong mga pamilya na ginawa, ginawa inyo, I will take action immediately. Bakit mo kinulong yan? Anong kasalanan yan? E kapag hindi ka makasagot sa akin ng ganun, ikaw ang ibalikta dyan. Ikaw ang ipasok ko talaga sa kulungan. Totoo, ganun ang ginagawa ko. Maniwala ka. Diyan si Secretary Goresa. May isang mayaman sa Dabao, mag-iinom yan siya, tapos uh, pagka nalasing, tinatapo niya yung mayor ako, congressman siya. Tinatapo niya yung buti, di nababasag. Eh nandoon ako, nakakapi ako sa kanto, kasi kailan ko yung mayaman. Ay, yung, di ba, kilala ko yung may-ari. Eh, tinitignan ko lang siya. Okay lang, kasi sabi niyo yung may-ari, na, ganoon talaga yan. Eh, golfer eh. Sa golf, ganoon rin. Parang tinatapon niya yung... Titignan ko lang siya. 
Tapos may mga bata, kasi yung pagka sa mga night club, pagka uh, umaga, medyo by one take one yan. No? Wala pa kasi yung mga customer, eh. but to attract the young people, gano'n na, mura, walang bayan. So he kept on throwing. Tapos may nagsayaw na na bata, mga bata, linis, tinapo na naman niya. Kaya lo'ng lumapit ako sa manya ko. <coughs> Putang ina ka. Ginanong ko yung ulo. Walang ulo, ayun, walang buhok. Ayun. Ginanong, tiso ito, Espanyol. Putang ina ka. Sino ka? Pero kilala ko kasi kapitbahay namin. Eh. Hindi lang ako kilala. I mean, dalawang kanto. Sabi ko, sino kang putang ina ka? Mag-asta ka. Yung, yung nagsagot, yung kadi na kasama niya, sabi niya, ito mayor, si Don Rafael Garcia. May ari ng auto transportation dyan sa... Nang, na sinapak ko, oh, matatlong beses, ginanon ko talaga. Pati yung kadi niya, tapos pag ano namin, may baril pa, walang lisensya, huli. So, sabi ko kay ito, ikaw, Don Rafael Garcia, putang ina ka, tapos na ang Espanyol dito sa Pilipinas. Leche ka. Tawagan mo yung station commander. Yung station commander, galit rin ako. Kaya bago lang na-assign doon, sa talumo yung station nila. Noon na mag-debut siya, yung bago pa, mag siya sa mga restaurant. Uh, binibigyan siya ka ng kape. Uh, para po respeto. Tapos may toasted bread na may butter. Eh, okay lang. Noong natagal na, sige na pa siya doon sa mga ano. Tapos nag-order na ng steak. Sinasama pa yung kabit ng mulang hiya. Tinawagan ko, sabi ko, sa putang, tawagan mo yung taranta, isa pa yan. So pagdating niya, sabi ko, ikaw animal ka, dug, tagal na kitang hinahanap, bisaya. Putang, nag-bitsay ka, magkamali, babarilin kita. Sabi ko, ano siya? Uh, sabi ko, libre ka, yung kala mo, kadalhin mo itong Don Rafael Garcia, ipasok mo sa kulungan. Pag magpasyal ako sa istasyon mo, pag nakita ako, ikaw pati itong unggoy na ito sa labas, pantay ka sa akin, papatayin kita doon sa istasyon mo. Yan na naman ako. Maraming tumawag hanggang umabot ng, oh, ayaw ko talaga eh. Ah, hayaan mo yan. Maraming nakikiusap, ganun, road, mga golfer. Maletsing yan. Yan mo, mayabang to. Ngayon, ito, tawag si Jesse sa kanya, part, uh, ah, matanda na eh, maraming lamok doon. Mabaho talaga, pati, wala, ang, ang presuhan sa, sa mga istasyon, walang kubeta yan. Doon ka magtae, doon ka kumain, doon ka, mal, doon ka matulog, bahala ka sa buhay mo. Ngayon, sabi ni, pakiusap ni Jess, yan na, sabi ko, Chris mo na. Ang unang tumamag, nanay ko, hindi talaga pumayag. Kapit mahay nga kami. Kasama yung asawa niya sa simbahan. Nanay ko nagsisimba araw-araw. Ito na itong... Well, and just an example na... Yung ganito ko. Just to stop. May mga privilege na privilege. Walang pa dito. So, tayo lahat. Pay your taxes. Tapos huwag kayong, huwag kayong matakot na bulsitin yung taga-goberno. Because I said, if you do not assert any right over them and insist on it, huwag matakot lang kayo. Ang oh, ano, style niya is, order ka mong mga bihera meron kayo. Paglapas ninyo sa naya, yan. Marami ng motorsiklo ang mga unggoy dyan, naghihintay. So, wala na nga niyan, chat. Sabi ko, basta magkamali yan sa inyo, sa harap ninyo, budyakan ko talaga para matapos na.
O kaya, report lang ninyo sa akin, paabot ninyo, barangay captain ninyo. Sabi niyo, yaman, sabi ni May, paabot mo lang. Meron talaga akong utusan doon. Bakit? Ngayon, <coughs> tayo, hirap ang bayan natin. May droga na, corruption, may paaway pa tayo ng Communist Party of the Philippines. So ito mga komunista, isa ito sa really pulled us down. So, bago ako naging presidente, nakiusap ako sa kanila na mag-istorya. And included in that yung MI, pati MN sa Mindanao. Ang komunista responded to us positively. And Doresa Bebot Bellio, and the rest of the government panel, they are there talking in Oslo because Oslo provided the good offices na magkaariglo tayo. In the fullness of God's time, kung maawa ang Panginoong Diyos atin, pag naplansya natin ito, ang problema natin ang Mindanao na lang. Ngayon, wala nang away sa communist front. Kaya nadadala ko yung mga sundalo sa hulo. Doon ang bakbakan. Kaya nung malapit na sila ma-wipe out, bakos marami ang napatay na sa... Eh, marami na akong sundalo. Hindi ako mag ng NPA. Eh, wala na eh. Uusap kami. Ngayon, pinap-expected ko yan. Ginawa nila yan, oh, meron ko. Pinaputok nila ang daba. Kaya yung sa barbecuehan plaza. But in a way, uh, ganun talaga. Tiisin lang natin. Total, uh, eh, nagkamali lang rin siguro ang gobyerno sa intelligence. It's a matter of intelligence. Eh. Mabagay na intelligence talaga. Yung pag-operate niya, madali na. But the intelligence uh, that uh, would uh, save us the day. Yun ang ano. But kung ma- ma-perfect ka rin nila ni Jess, siya rin sa gandel ng Moro Insurrection, okay na tayo. Kung makuha natin itong tatlo, mahirap pa, it's a very long shot. But kung sakali lang may milagro mangyari, maawa ang Panginoong Diyos, okay na tayo. And we can build really a nation. Ngayon, baski ganun lang ito ngayon. Wala lang korupsyon, walang kriminalidad, okay na rin tayo. Ang nakaproblema lang dito is itong human rights. Kasi, ang sinabi ko, at abogado ako, Amat, saan mo tignan, hindi talaga illegal na magsabi. Huwag mong sirain ang bayan ko kasi papatayin kita. Well, do not destroy the next generation. Alam mo kung magbitaw ako nito, kung bitawan ko ito, I lose the momentum. Kawawa yung mga anak pati apo ninyo. Sigurado yan. Hmm. Hirap nga tayo na ako ang presidente, lalo na kung hindi mo po. Ako, may advice. Ako, sumihin ko sa inyo diretso, Pilipino man tayo. Pinapatay ko talaga. Sorry na lang. Kaya kung may kapatid ka, may tatay ka, sabihin mo talaga. Okay man yan tayo, pero huwag kang magtaka kung babagsak ka talaga. Because that is really in defense of the state. But let me be very clear about the extrajudicial killing. Itong mga polis natin, ito ang katayot, itong mga nakaputi ilat, polis yan, uh, military, halo yan sila. Uh, sa Philippines, sa security group ko, yung secure ng tao. Ito, PMA. Ang polis, PNPA, Philippine National Police Academy. Isa Philippine Military Academy. They stayed there for four years. 
and they are lectured on on all topics about governance, about the arrest, search and seizure and everything. Hindi ko na kailangan sabihin sa kanila na, oh, maghuli ka, pero ito ha, bantayan mo kasi ganun. Because every day, sinasabi talaga sa kanila yan, sa academy, that you can only kill a criminal only if your life is in danger. Kung utusan ko, sabihin ko, magtrabaho kayo, hanapin ninyo, it really means go out, hunt for them, arrest them, take them into the custody of the law. And if they refuse and offer a violent resistance, thereby putting yourself or your life in danger, danger of so being killed, kill them. And then they're okay, lang na karon. Pati yung reward na reward, dead or alive, it's not even ours. It is not a language of the Filipinos. Sino nagturo sa atin yan? The Americans. Where? Yung mga cowboy nila, dead, Billy the Kid, dead or alive. Oh, 50 dollar. <laughs> ang problema nito, Amerikano, kung sila ang gumamit niyan, persons of interest, which actually, you are being hunted. And if you offer a resistance, just like the bomber, they will kill you. And when we use it, because we are not the Americans, and they want us to be more inferior than them, they will ha ha hunt for you and threaten you with the international court, criminal court of justice. Kailan pa ba? When was it wrong to say, do not do it in my country because I will kill you? Do not harm the next generation. Ang problema, it started with the human rights. And what is really very unsettling is that pati ang itong State Department and eventually... Obama. Ganito yan. Buhay pa man tayo. They remember they went to Iraq? Gira? O pumasok sila sa Iraq. What was the excuse given to the public? To the international committee, to the world. Because we will be going there because there are weapons of mass destruction at Saddam might use it against the world. They went there, destroyed Iraq, killed so many people in the process, and to say in the end, there is no weapon of mass destruction. You're not alone. Here the count is, I have, I have a three million, I add ko yung akin, that's four million added. All gangsters and bad men. Ito dito, you destroy a country, you kill a leader just to say that there is no weapon of mass destruction. You undermine Libya, it's a failed state. You are now eating Syria. What is the redemption of Syria? Syria is being supported by Putin and China. Kaya hindi nila makuha-kuha. Other uh, Assad would have long been gone. Sila kung sila ang gumawa, whatever stupid reason, it's always sacred to them. And for us little people, when we go into preserving the generation of your country, you are threatened left and right. So that is why I was trying to answer but nobody was listening to me because every time I give an answer, ito rin mga ugok na, ah, dyan sa labas. 
I-quote nila ako, but they do not complete the sentence. Or they do not complete the story. What is it? I will kill you. They would only quote, I will kill you. If you this, I will kill you. It is conditional. If it may or it may not happen, depending on the guy I am threatening. I am just waiting for your sin. But if you do not commit the sin, you will not die. Nothing will happen to you. Kaya kung ganito, sabi ko, sabi ko, I'll give you a computation, ha? Simply lang. There are three million addicts in our country. Three million at one hit. Isang snort of Shabu, it's 200 pesos. So three million, one third, 200 pesos, that is 6,000 for one individual. Okay? Now, if they all sort out the three million, Six, six times three, that is 18 billion a month. That is 216 billion a month. A year, brother. Mina, mining companies, how much are they paying the Filipinos? It's only 70 billion. And our country are full of holes on the destruction of the environment, the untold destruction of. Kita mo, and they take it as a joke, or maybe that you are joking, and easy for them to say, "We'll hail you to the, to hell with you." There was this lady, she black. Uh, be careful, Mister Doctor. Uh, shut up. I mean, he said, uh, did you hear Obama today chastise you? Oh, hey. Sino itong putang inan to? Alam mo bakit? Kaka-insulto eh. Nung mayor, when I was mayor, well, probably it was good. But I was just a mayor and sig insignificant in the affairs of the nation. I'm just one mayor of a city. Well, there are so many cities in the Philippines. But when I became president, Tapos ganunin mo ako, mother, how about my countrymen? It's, it's not about me. However insignificant you may look at me. No qualms about that. But how about the feelings now of my countrymen? How about now the friends outside of the country? That's why I was really mad. Galit ako. When you do that, you insult a people, a country. We are all the time. So, you know, itong ating kasi, this is how it really, it really works. We have been conquered by the Spaniards for 400 years. We were conquered by the Americans for 50 years. Live of the fat of the land and colonize us. World War II. Were it not for the fact that they were in the Philippines, we would have never been a major target. We could be drawn into the conflict, but not as a major target. And the bombings. But because we were under the Americans, we were perceived to be pro Western. And because, it's the truth, because we were on their side and the Filipino soldiers died for them. At the end of the war in 1945, the Americans wanted to capture Manila. 200,000 died. Look at the pictures. Manila was really living. By those bombs, Americans. Because the Japanese were there in the American Manila. 
So they wanted to flush them out of pinagbubudo na carpet bombing. And who caused the most destruction? We were liberated. Well, of course, we were happy because we didn't at that time. But right after that, the Cold War. So we were fed with lies about uh, evil, about China, na itong China may sungay, kung ano-ano lang. So we grew up with the Red Scare. And then, we, uh, as grown-ups, we kept a distance from China. Kasi, red, ano nga, mga komunista, komunista, they look, uh, they perfectly characterize communism as an oppression on the people. My brother, if you were the communist, why would you oppress your own people? Uh, there was really hunger that cannot be stopped. It was on the fourth of Mochi Tong that there was this winter of no food. Ngayon, ako, sabi ko, this has to stop. Because you are abusing the courtesy of my country. So, I'll try to figure out a new foreign policy. America, baski ako, hindi ako makapunta doon, ako bigyan ng visa ng mga... <laughs> When I was young, I went to America. The question was asked me, I was still in college, why are you going to America? She wanted to visit my girlfriend. Because I don't know. Oh. Tapos, so what if you decide, are you in love with your girlfriend? Oh, yes, of course. What if you decide to marry and stay there? Sabi ko, Mr. Consul, even if you offer me free visas for a lifetime, and even if you offer me $10,000, I'd still return to my country and be a Filipino. Ever uh, since, ah. uh, the, 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 the problem is you go to America, you are not issued a visa. I remember the humiliation of Mayor Perdeses. Sino taga Oriental dito? Nigo. Uh, Perdeses was with me, but I did not go there. We got uh, any invitation study grant. He was one of those extended invitations to go to a month long study under the auspices of USAID. There was a letter of invitation. And the poor man had to travel. He was not in good health. For that thing, he was denied. So many people say, so he has the letter of invitation for your government. Denied. Hindi ka makuma. Pero sila, anytime. They enter the Philippines visa free. Well, there will always be a time for it. Bakit hindi natin tablahin? Eh, sabihin niya, well, there are many Filipinos there. Ay, wala na yun. Puro Amerikano na yun. Ugali doon pagkain na yun. O bakit kami dito sa China? Walang Pilipino? Dito pati sa Mainland, about 300,000. And yet, China is very kind. Wala naman dito. Huwag ka lang magkakasalaan ng mga tao. Drug, drugs, wala, kayo, wala akong pakialam dyan. Basta dito wala. I'll be frank with them. Here and now, I will tell uh, the China, basta drug, Kung death penalty doon, ibala kayo. Kasi doon sa akin, death penalty ron. Sa karsada, pag yun. <laughs> so, kind of, 
put them to. Kasi hindi na ako na pinapakinggan. Sinasabi ko na 3 million, that's good grace to help for everybody. Drugs is hell. I was trying to explain, CNN, BBC, would cut my statements and insist on those extrajudicial killings. Assuming it to be true. Assuming it to be true. What is that compared to the shattered nations of the Middle East? Yung binumba ninyo. At least dito yung mga criminals. The drug addicts, the drug lords. And I told them, go out because I will kill you. Also, don't. When you bump a hospital, when you bump a school, when you bump a nursery, anong kasa... We pale in comparison with what the, at the atrocity. In America, this is human, human rights. Look, guys, you're shooting black people while they are there in the ground, lying. Pinagbabaril mo pa. So what's the difference? Why is nobody complaining about you? That, that's disparity because you have power. Oh well. I will now realign. I will not ask for arms. America need not worry that I will the, place their missiles. Why? Useless. Why? Because if Russia, China, America, British, Pakistan, India, Iran, would start a nuclear war, and it will be a world war, there is nothing to talk about except to see you in heaven. <laughs> it will simply just create a big bang again, and uh, maybe another universe will emerge. No, no reason for me to be getting a... Uh, for what? Rebellion, uh, rifles, and we, you, cannot, you, you cannot kill your own people. We have to talk. If they want to talk, we force them to talk. It's the only way to solve it. We cannot be forever be fighting and killing our own countrymen. But Dito, I will, the foreign policy, Veers now towards Dito. I will not ask, but if they offer, and if they'll ask me, you need this aid? Of course we are, we're very poor. You, know, you need this railway? Yes, sir. And if you can give us a soft loan, give us uh, something like 20 years to pay, 15 years to pay, even with the price, just give us a little bit of an elbow room. That's about them. I will not go to America anymore. They'll just be insulted there. When was the last time we have been with America? Did we ever had any railroad? In Russia, it's now crisscrossing the uh, eh, African continent. It's almost crisscrossing now the African continent, the railway. What was the price? Loyalty. China said, goodwill. We will do it for you. And if they are going to give it to us or help us, lend us the money and we can do it in our own country, I will win. No more American interference. No more American exercises. What for? You always want China, America, uh, China uh, facing China, American, and Filipinos. Why? Why would I surprise the life of my soldiers? War? Dalawa lang ang jet plane natin. <laughs> Binili natin sa Korea. We bought two jet planes. And I've been insisting, because somebody told me from Korea, uh, those are American planes. 
And I ask for a clarification. Because somebody criticized me. Hindi ang gawa ng Amerika na sabi ng no. Ine-outsource lang yan. Ngayon mga Nike, mga ano, dito ginagawa. China. It was just outsource. It was just a symbol there. Meron tayong dalawang aeroplano. Sabi nila, liars ang gago. Ayaw tayong pabilihan yung mga missile na sa baba. We have ordered it. They say that we are, we are, they are giving to us. Wala pa akong nakita ang missile na. I, I, I really do not know what's, what's the... Wala, wala talang taken for granted. So, it's about time to say goodbye, my friend. <laughs> your, your stay in my country was for your own benefit. Do not tell us that you provided us good education. We would have survived if there was no education in my country at the time. We would have invented one better than what you have given us. So, mabuti yan nakita tayo dito. But ako dito, I'll go back to the basics of the country. It's okay na tayo. I assure you, I give you my word, we're okay now. I give you my word. There will be no corruption. My advice to all is that be assertive of your rights. And anybody from the BIR, Customs, Immigration, you have my backing, sampalin mo. Create a rocos so that you will be heard. Kagaya ko, kung hindi ko bidunsit ang mga putang ina niya, hindi ko sila pinaghidot-hidot, hindi ako mapansin. Then I would not, I would not have been heard at all. Di para akong gago na takutin akong mapriso. Look, even if it is true that they can hail me to the criminal courts, I would be willing to rat in jail for my country. God gave me a miracle of sorts. No money no political machinery that was strong enough to carry. But I won. So if I stay there until next month, if I am assassinated, ousted, then take it as part of that destiny. No, no. Time to go. Mapaalis man ako, o mapatay ako, o ano. Hindi, hanggang doon lang, ang binigay ng Diyos sa akin. Mga gano'n. Eh, 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 yung sila siya, takot-takotin mo ako na ikaw patayin ka. Ay, bullshit. Lahat ng tao ba mamatay? What, what's so strange about... Kami nga sa kabinet, magdasal kayo, mahulog ito, pralo na yan, ha? Bakan, <laughs> bakante ang... Mas marami ka, shh, wala mo dito, shh, wala mo dito. Yung mga babae, oh, wala ba, stop. Sige, sige, kayo, tao, tao. Ay, ay, by, by the way, Kahir Alonto is here. Secretary Alonto, sa, have you, I mentioned you? Mindanao Development Authority. Please stand up. RJ Hasento is also there. I'm sure I saw him. Oh. Oh. The forever rock and roll guys. Pero ito si RJ, habi lang niya yan. Ang habi niya yung, uh, he's an economist. They used to own illegal steel mills. Hmm. Ang habi ko, ha, alam na ninyo. <laughs> habi ko nandyan sa kwarto. Sabi ko, huwag kang lumabas. <laughs> Kasi yung mga chismosa ito. <laughs> well, anyway, uh, I, I, I'm very happy to, to see you tonight. Uh,
And uh, sa anak lang po ako ng mahirap. That's why. Uh, I'm, I'm left, actually. I'm the first president sa left. But I am not a member of the Communist Party of the Philippines. Pero ang ano ko talaga is dito sa kaliwa. I've never been a writer, I could never be one. Uh, I'm just a son of a poor father. So, itong buhay na ito, hindi naman tayo lahat pinagbigyan ng ganito. There are just how many? 16 presidents? I should thank God for that. And I will not waste it. At wala akong agenda, pera-pera, wala na yun sa akin. Uh, baon pwede pa. <laughs> Pero yung mga corruption, corruption. I, I guarantee you, you'll never hear a whisper yung hindi ko type yan. I'm here to serve, I'm all. By the time, I would yet, but even uh, guarantee you that I'd finish my term, by that time, I'd be old. I'd, I'd like to just leave something. And uh, no, I say, oh, what would uh, what were the words uh, that you'd want to be remembered? I'll oh, just say, Rodrigo Duterte. He tried his best. Lamat po. Thank you, Mr. President, for gracing the event.